All right, what's up guys? Zach here, I wanna share with you how to create a two-step sign-up form within Klaviyo. Let's dive in. So really what you wanna do first here is you wanna go over to sign-up forms and we'll start by uh, making sure that we actually have the code of the sign-up form on our website. So you need to make sure right here, as you can see, you're gonna to have to install the sign-up form code on your website. It's just gonna be a small snippet of code. Generally, it can kinda of go underneath the body tag. So all you do is just click this right here and you would go and follow, um, follow these instructions that they give you. Um, so right now, you know, so everything's set up. If it's in Shopify, it's gonna be super easy for you. If it's some, some sort of other uh, e-commerce integration, generally it's a pretty straightforward process. You just install the app and click a few buttons and kind of follow that. Um, otherwise, if it's like, you know, not even a e-com website at all, you would just manually add the, the code here. And then you can click this and check the form, ins form installation. And eventually you should get this green check box at the top right here. And then up here, you wanna make sure, um, we like to do it where uh, we only show one form per session and we don't show multiple forms at the same time so they don't overlap. So I would hit save there. And then next we can go and hit create signup form. And then at this point, you're gonna have a lot of different templates and options. You can also uh, just create a new signup form at the top if you want to from scratch. However, we're gonna start with the template so you can kind of just get the basics um, going. So we like to do full page screens, um, full page signup forms. You can also do like some sort of pop-up. Um, a pop-up is gonna be a little bit smaller. Full screen, of course, is gonna take up the full page, but generally we get the best results with full page pop-ups, but you can use either. Also another note, we're gonna work on the desktop only version first, and then we're gonna do the mobile only version. So let's go ahead and create this. We're gonna call it, um, let's see, uh, desktop pop-up test right there. And then you wanna choose your email subscriber list. So it's gonna typically be uh, your newsletter list or wherever you're putting, taking these phone numbers and these uh, emails and it's wherever you're putting those, uh, whatever newsletter list that you're, you're putting them into. So if you have something different, just put it right here. And then I definitely recommend adding the teaser. As you can see, it leads to higher conversions. Let's go ahead and create the form there. Awesome, all right, so we create, created the form. We're gonna have a couple different screens that we're gonna go through at the top here. We're gonna actually add in an SMS screen next, but we can kind of customize this. There's also gonna be two, uh, two of these screens on the left, so styles and targeting and behavior. So we'll kind of go through and first do the styles to make it look nice. And then after that, we'll work on the targeting and behavior to make sure it's showing up at the right time. So uh, just kind of going left to right here, we're actually going to um, allow this to save. We'll give that one second. Okay, cool, there we are. So this teaser right here, generally um, I like to have it have some sort of text, but it could be like an icon or something, something like this. Awesome, all right. So uh, I generally like to do a circle. I like to make it large. And then I like to do um, after form is closed, so it doesn't show immediately. You could show the close button. I don't typically like that too much. Um, we're gonna add in here, we're gonna say, you know, want 10% off, question mark. And then we're gonna actually, let's see, we're gonna delete that. We could keep the drop shadow. We can make this, let's say, you know, whatever, whatever color that you want. We're gonna make it for visibility purposes. We're gonna make it gray. And then we can go into here and we can kind of change the sizing and the colors. Um, that's gonna be way too big. So we're gonna do something like that. And then we can align the text and kind of make it something like this. It could be a little bit smaller if we wanted to. Could make it like 18. Awesome. You wanna make sure too that you actually test this on your website. It might look great here in Clavio but then you go to your website and it looks terrible. Um, that can definitely happen, so just kind of play around with these settings and make sure the colors and everything stands out with your site. Um, you can also do a rectangle at the bottom, which is okay, uh, a corner at the bottom, which is okay, but the, the circle is my favorite in general. Um, also, you wanna make sure that they're not, this isn't overlapping with anything else you have on your site, so if you have 
um, in the bottom red corner or if you have on the top or something like that. You don't want to, you want to make sure the position is okay. Um, I, you can also put it on the left, like right there or something else. All right, awesome. That's the teaser. Next up is the email opt-in. So this is going to be that first page. Um, let's say if we wanted to, you know, get rid of this, we could actually go and replace it. We could do something like your logo right here, and then you can change the width. We could put it like 250 or something like that. And then hold up, let's instantly unlock. Um, let's say if we wanted to change this font right here, we could do, do something like Poppins and we could go with bold. Hold up, instantly unlock 10% off your first order when you sign up for updates, email, and then let's say everything looks pretty solid here. We just wanna change that background color. We could definitely do that. So at that point we can go into styles and then we can choose this background color and we can choose white. So that's gonna match what we wanna go for. Awesome, hold up, instantly unlock 10% off your first order when you sign up for updates. This is just gonna be text right here. And then email, pretty straightforward right there. Here's where you submit the form and it's gonna to go to the newsletter and then after you submit, it's gonna show the next steps. So you wanna make sure with these buttons that they're exactly what you're looking for. And then no thanks, it's gonna just close the form. So uh, I think this looks pretty solid. 10% off, matches, makes sense. Let's just change the color here. So let's grab some sort of blue and we're gonna change this and background color. We're gonna put that right into there. Awesome. And you can of course ch change the button sizes and make sure it make looks a little bit more on brand. We're not gonna do that for right now. We're just gonna leave it as is, but you can kind of go in here and if you wanna space these buttons out a little bit more, change the text, um, you could say, um, for example, let's see, you know, no thanks. I don't like saving money. Boom, there we go. You can change the text, kind of do whatever you want here. So awesome. All right, we got first screen, second screen, and then our success screen right here. So say if we, again, if we wanted to change this, Poppins and we wanted to do something like this. Uh, we could do that. I don't recommend putting the coupon on there. Um, I recommend just taking it off and doing something different, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, so this is the first step. Now we can add the second step, SMS opt-in, and we can do this. There's two different options here. There's the smart opt-in and then there's the traditional SMS opt-in. Um, this smart opt-in is like when you get on your iPhone, uh, six digit code and it auto fills and you can just press the button and it, you know, the thing gets texted, the code gets texted to you and then you can easily without leaving your pop-up screen, just click like, hey, like from messages, you get that little nice one-time code and it auto fills it, it's super slick. Um, so you can do this or you can just do the traditional SMS opt-in. Um, generally, as you can see here, it's recommended to do the smart opt-in for mobile but since we're doing desktop, we're gonna actually do this right here. And we want to um, add people to the SMS subscribers list. So we're first gonna create the desktop pop-up and then we'll do the mobile. And for the mobile, we can do the smart opt-in, get that working, or you can just do traditional SMS for, um, for mobile. Either way, we're gonna add that step. Awesome, and then let's say, you know, join the SMS club get access to text only deals when you sign up for SMS. You could add a little bit more here. Let's say, you know, text only deals, um, first access to sales and, you know, um, VIP sneak peeks when you sign up to SMS. You can add a little bit more here just to make it appealing to join SMS. A lot of times too, what we like to do is either do like, you know, 10% off here and then 15% off here to give them a bit of an extra incentive or just tell them, hey, like here's the exclusive benefits of signing up for SMS. Otherwise, they're gonna be a bit confused and they're gonna be like, hey, like I thought I already gave you my email and I got 10% off, like you're now kind of pulling the rug under underneath me. Don't wanna do that. So join the SMS club, perfect. 
And then I like to put this text at the bottom here and you could do something like this. So, you know, phone number, sign up, make it super simple. Um, you could change this button color again, um, kind of go back to that, that same last step and make sure, again, you want to go here and make sure that all your, you know, buttons actually look the same. And if we want to get rid of that outline, we just go to border style, none. Perfect. Awesome. Join the SMS club. Looks pretty solid right there. So here's where we're at. Got that. And then we want to change this. We could replace that again with our logo. Probably make it look exactly the same as this. So they kind of see that, oh yeah, it's, you know, it's branded. And then I like to do something like this, you know, thanks for subscribing, Poppins Bold 44. So we're gonna match that. Poppins Bold, thanks for subscribing. And then I like to do, check your inbox and text for your 10% off code. And then right below it, if you don't see it, paste text only. Make sure to check your spam or promotions folder that's my favorite way of doing things instead of giving the coupon on the pop-up that way they actually have to go check their email and check their texts so they can't give you like a fake phone number or a fake email you actually have to um you know no no bots or no spam can seep through the cracks basically all right awesome so i'm gonna go ahead and align that and then we want to add a button here so if we take this button right there, which is simply going to take them back to the site. So we can go, we could say right here, either like close form or go back to site. Awesome. And then that's just going to close the form. Cool. All right. So that is it. We have step one, step two. Again, it's going to be a, you know, a big pop-up. However, you can make this smaller if you want to. Um, SMS opt-in is gonna be on the second page. This is generally how I like to set it up. And then success page, boom, there we go. It's kind of hierarchical in that you have, you know, this big text right here, this top line is bolded, and then the, you kind of go one, two, three uh, when you're viewing this and you hit back to site. Awesome, all right. so. That's it in terms of like the styling, targeting and behavior. We'll go through this. So now that we have a good looking pop-up, we need to make sure it's shown to the right people at the right time. So this form should not be displayed immediately. You don't wanna do that. You wanna do it based on rules. We're gonna select for, for desktop only. We're gonna wanna, wanna do exit intent after a time delay. We'll set that to, we'll start with like eight seconds, but it could be also um, you know, up to 12 or 14 seconds after that. And then after visitor has scrolled, let's say if they've gone 70% or after they've visited a certain number of pages. So this is pretty aggressive. You can change all these settings and you can do split tests with all of these, but this is gonna show uh, if someone you know is, is on the site like this and they kind of start scrolling to the top left, it's gonna show the pop-up after a time delay of eight seconds, then it'll show the pop-up after they, or after they've scrolled 70%, or if they check out the main landing page and then they click a button, that's what two means right here. So any of those, if any of those apply, it's gonna show the pop-up. So this is pretty aggressive. You can also dial it back, but generally we like to start with this. Awesome, and then frequency after the visitor closes the form, show again after five days, that's fine. We could probably change this to seven so that maximum they get this once every seven days. Don't show again if the form was submitted or if the URL button was clicked. So again, I like to do that. Um, and then display, I like to do desktop only. And then the next pop-up that we create is gonna be a duplicate of this and it's gonna be mobile only. Um, and then I like to turn click outside of form to close. I like to turn that off. So what we can do is turn both of those off and just do desktop only for this one. Awesome, all right, so that's the display. Targeting, we wanna only show this to people we don't have in Klaviyo. So that's that, but you could also, if you're creating a pop-up 
that is targeting email subscribers and converting them to SMS, where the only fields on there are the SMS fields. You could do this right here. You could also show have a VIP specific pop-up. Um, you could show a pop-up to anyone who is already an email subscriber. Maybe you're just, you just have an announcement or something like that. Here's where you would do that. But generally, we like to choose this. And then URLs, if you're on Shopify, you don't wanna show it on your cart or checkout page necessarily. So we're gonna do not show on certain URLs containing, you just have to check this on your site, but generally for Shopify, it's gonna look something like this. Checkouts, specifically checkouts, plural. I don't know why they do that in Shopify. That's how it is. So just go on your site and if you have WooCommerce or if you have another integration besides Shopify, it's gonna look a little bit different. So just see like what your cart page is, but you just don't wanna show it on URLs containing the cart or checkout because they're already purchasing. They don't, don't need to interrupt them necessarily. Um, or if you have another landing page you don't wanna show this on, this is where you would add URLs to not show. Awesome, and then uh, you, UTM parameters, if you wanna set those up, you definitely can. Location, if you wanna only show this to people in you know, Canada or the US or the UK and don't show to people in these locations. Here's where you do this. And then here's where you can target people based on like the content of their cart. Pretty interesting. I'm not going to get into that particularly today. Awesome. All right. So we have everything, everything pretty set, pretty much set up, pretty solid. Um, we could definitely run some split tests and things like that. However, this is a good a good base. You could split test a lot of this and split test the messaging and things like that. Um, you could also, if you wanted to, you could add, you know, an image off to the the right here, which, um, you know, would look would look fine. I like to keep ours as simple as possible so that when you're signing up, you can do that. Um, you could also add in like a micro yes step at the start, which is just like a yes no question. Hey, do you want X percent off your first order? I recommend split testing that, but we're not going to get into you know all every single aspect of pop up you know strategy today. So uh, we're just going to keep it keep it simple, and you can change the the styles of everything in the form. You can kind of look at like when someone hovers over something, like what is that color? Um, all these different styles, you can change the input fields. I like to just take a template, change a few colors and go off of that instead of trying to change every little thing here, but just kind of match it to your brand, make sure you have the same fonts as your brand, all that. Um, awesome, all right. And then I generally like to do um, like large width. I like to make my pop-ups as big and noticeable as possible. That way, they either click the X in the corner or they hit this little button right there and it's pretty easy to see um, and they, they never miss it. You don't wanna have like a small pop-up or, or like a fly out or anything like that. Generally, it's just kind of more of an, more of an annoyance. Um, this is a good, good structure here. So cool, we're gonna hit publish. You're gonna have some alerts here. Don't worry about those right now. We're good, publish anyway. All right, now our form is live. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and clone it and we're going to do mobile test mobile pop-up test cool there we go let's see awesome all right now we have a duplication of what we just did we're gonna make a few small changes to mobile only so here we're going to go into targeting and behavior. And of course, display on desktop only. We're gonna change that to mobile only. Boom, there we go. So mobile only, pretty straightforward. Don't wanna click outside of form to close. Um, we wanna make sure they have to hit the X or they have to hit this, no thanks. Cool, all right. So now that we have our mobile only version, we can optimize specifically for mobile. So if this doesn't look good, on your mobile screen, I need, like you definitely need to test it on your actual phone. So make sure this looks good. Make sure this isn't weird or anything like that. But this should be fine. Um, email opt-in. Again, if you want to change some of the, if you want to make this font like maybe a little bit smaller, you definitely could. You can do something like 40. But the point is that you can optimize specifically for one version or the other, all in because you have you have different analytics for two different systems. And then right here, SMS opt-in, here would be a great time to do the 
uh, smart opt-in. I'm not gonna go through that every single entire step right now, but here would be um, you know, a great option, great time to do that. Success screen, go back to site, pretty straightforward. The only thing that you really wanna change, targeting and behavior, um, when visitor is exiting the page, it only makes sense to do that for desktop, not mobile. Um, there's no way for you to necessarily tell if someone's cursor is going to the top left of the screen or the top right of the screen. Um, you, you can't track cursors on mobile. That's why you gotta, gotta take that off. So awesome. Everything else should be pretty straightforward. Again, only two changes for mobile uh, are gonna be smart opt-in as well as exit intent. You wanna remove that as one of your triggers. Cool, all right, so at that point, you can hit publish. And there we are. Should be on the site, should show live right here. Now, you really just wanna test it and make sure these actually work, again, on your on your phone. Don't want to just put these up and assume they're gonna work, because a lot of times there might be issues with the text not showing up or um, the pop-up not showing up. Just make sure to actually test it out. Cool, all right, so at this point, I went through everything. There's a lot of optimizations that you could probably be making, a lot of different things to split test and to test out, and you probably don't wanna be doing that. So if you're running a DTC e-com brand, you basically have two options. You can try to do all this yourself. You could try to figure out these pop-ups. You could try to figure out how to have, you know, product display page pop-ups and cart abandonment product pop-ups and SMS only pop-ups. There's a lot that you can get into here with just this one subject. So if you want to try that out and try to implement everything yourself, by all means, go for it. Or you can hire a team of experts like ZHS Ecom to help you add revenue. Our recommendation is to check out zhs-ecom.com. Book a call there so we can see, uh, you know, how can we create a win-win partnership between us and you. So appreciate your time and hope you have an awesome rest of your day.